So good morning, you guys. Um, I thought for today, um, if you guys didn't want to Zoom, um, I thought we could, I would make you a couple of videos. The first one is going to be the answers to the quiz. Um, if you want to jot these down, and I will try to go at a somewhat slow pace, um, I'm going to tell you what the answers are. Um, if you write the answers down and you would like to retake the quiz, you're welcome to do that. Um, it will boost your grade. If you, a lot of these are going to also be on our bingo game on Friday. So if you want to start memorizing these, if you want to just, um, you know, retake the pop quiz and you already have all the answers because I'm about to tell you them. You guys did somewhat okay on the pop quiz. Um, I have maybe, it was kind of a shock to you and I know that now and that's kind of why um, as a teacher I just want you to keep up with your reading. It's not supposed to be something like, you know, uh, it should not be a shock. If you're taking notes and you are on top of your reading, um, you know, your, your, te your teachers in every class could come up with a quiz and you would be ready because you're taking notes and you're already on top of your homework, okay? So if you did not do well, um, I did not make it that many points. But this is your opportunity to write down the answers and what you can do is when we're done with this video you guys are welcome to go take the quiz again i'll know that you took the quiz again because it'll show up in my email there's nothing wrong with taking it again um please do that okay the second video is going to be a huge summary of what happens between chapters one and nine um, I am going to post the box notes for chapters 8 and 9. Um, I would prefer you guys have your own box notes, but I know that your lives are busy. Um, I know that things are not always easy for everybody. So I'm going to post my box notes, and if you want to copy mine, you can. But I do want you to listen to that video, especially if you're lost and you haven't been doing the reading. Um, I'm not judging. What I'm saying is listen to the summary in the next video and I think it'll clear up a lot of things that you might be struggling with. Um, third, I am going to be tutoring today at 315. On Google Classroom there's a link that you can click. Once you come into tutoring I'm going to show you how to sign up for tutoring. But just go ahead and come on in and I'll show you how to do that. Um, it's kind of a five-step pro process to sign up for tutoring. So just come to tutoring at 315 if you're struggling with anything. Right now I'm offering an assignment that's worth 100 points. If you're missing over 100 points worth of assignments, I would recommend you do this assignment instead, um, as well as keep up with your Tom Sawyer, okay? So let's go over this, and then I'm going to make another video um, in a little while that has to do with summarizing some of the main things in the book not only so you can do well um, if I quiz you again but also because you're playing bingo and I want you guys to get all those good prizes okay so if you did not do well on this copy down these answers and take this quiz again okay so you know you had the pop quiz on chapters one through five um, you're allowed to use everything Pretty much in my class, I'll let you use your notes on everything. I don't want to make you struggle. I just want you to get in the idea of being prepared at all times. Okay, so you obviously know your first and last name. Who does Tom convince to paint the fence for him? Okay, so this one was confusing for some of you. Um, a lot of you were thinking it was Jim, um, but it was actually Ben Rogers. Jim was kind of, he tried to convince Jim, but Jim was just, just too smart. So um, here comes Ben Rogers eating his apple, and Tom decides, you know, I'm going to try to convince him that painting the fence is special. Okay, so it was Ben Rogers. He, Tom convinced Ben Rogers to paint the fence for him. What does Tom Sawyer think of people who have handkerchiefs? Okay, so I can guarantee you that Tom has never had a handkerchief. Um, back in the old days, 
You know, back in Mark Twain's time, people didn't use Kleenex. They used a handkerchief. And if you had a handkerchief, it generally meant you, you could afford a handkerchief. And if you could afford a handkerchief instead of just plain old Kleenex, that meant you were probably a little bit wealthier. And you carried your handkerchief with you everywhere. And at the end of the day, you would throw it into the laundry. So that was what kind of the elite people did back in the late 1800s. Even in the 1900s, people were still holding their handkerchiefs. So that Tom Sawyer thought these people were snobs. He thought, you know, if you have a handkerchief, you must think you're just so great. Uh, but that's Tom Sawyer's, you know, thinking um, is illogical thinking, kind of. Tom lives with her because his parents are gone. This is on your bingo. So I hope you're listening to this video, writing down answers. Tom lives with Aunt Polly. Um, some of you were confused by, you thought maybe I was making true and false questions. Um, what I did not do was put emphasis on the um, answers for your quiz. So if Tom lives with her, so you can hear the expression in my voice when I make a video, but it's hard to hear the expression on your quiz. So Tom lives with her because his parents are gone. So on your bingo, on Friday, this one is going to be Aunt Polly. Tom lives with Aunt Polly. Tom sees this girl and is instantly in love. He even finds a flower that she drops and holds it next to his heart. Okay, so he, Tom sees this girl is Becky Thatcher. So that is the answer for that one, if you want to write that down. So let's go over it just one second. So Ben Rogers, Snobs, Aunt Polly, and Becky Thatcher. If you guys are writing these down to take the quiz again. He sees Becky Thatcher and he instantly forgets about Amy. Poor Amy. This is what Tom plays with in church because the sermon is boring. Okay, so he... You know, he's 12, he doesn't want to be in church, he wants to be out having adventures, he feels like people are keeping him stuck, and, um, you know, a lot of you might feel that way right now. You want to do so many things, but you're constantly, I mean, I've been your age also, it's like, well, are you ever going to let me do something that I want to do? So he plays with, he pulls out, um, he's just crazy about getting attention, so he pulls out this little beetle, for some reason... Little Tom Sawyer has to bring a little black beetle to church, and he starts playing with it, and that's how he keeps himself entertained. So black beetle is the answer for that one. He is Tom's best friend. Okay, a lot of you put, put Joe Harper. Joe Harper is actually just a friend of his. It's not his best friend. Um, you're going to know the difference uh, between um, Joe Harper and Huck, because Huck is going to become his kind of adventure best friend. Anytime that Huck needs, you know, he's out and about, he has no real home, he kind of floats around, does what he wants. Um, but his real best friend is Huck, the very friend. And you'll know when he wants to go out with Tom because Huck is the one who makes him go and he can't get out of the I don't know why, but when Mark Twain was writing about his childhood here, um, maybe his best friend made cat sounds at the window. But that's how Tom knows that Huck wants to go out and have an adventure, is he makes a meow cat sound at his window. She is upset because Tom is now giving her attention to Becky instead of her. Okay, so this is going to be Amy Lawrence. She is incredibly heartbroken. She thought she was engaged to Tom. And now Tom sees Becky Thatcher, and he's just, you know, completely forgot about her. So she's heartbroken, she's upset, and, you know, we, even as, you know, girls, we get jealous, and if we have someone's attention, we don't want to lose it to somebody else, right? We don't want some other girl to come around and steal our guy away, right? So that's what's happening. Um, imagine, I mean, these characters are your age. So if you can imagine you like a girl or you like a guy and all of a sudden 
um, you know, they were acting like they like you back and then their attention is now on someone else, that's going to hurt. So she's upset because Tom is now giving her attention. So Amy Lawrence, he is the author of Tom Sawyer. Samuel Clemens or Mark Twain would have worked for here. Becky's father does this for a living. Okay, so this was confusing for some of you. Um, I'm not sure why some of you thought he was a lawyer or you just didn't know. But his her father is the as a judge. He's the new judge in town. I think that was chapter one. They told us that. In the first chapter, Tom is eating this in a closet. Okay, so this is jam. Um, this is, you know, classic literature. I'm not going to find you guys eating jam in a closet. So that's kind of a special, a special thing about going back and reading books from this time period. Tom's half-brother is Sid. What do Jim and Willie Mufferson have in common? Okay, so these are the good boys. These are the ones, um, you know, anyone that's not like you, you kind of feel like, well, I'm not going to get along with that person because they're not like me. So Tom has this attitude that these are the good boys. He knows that he's not a good boy. Secretly, he might wish he was a good boy, but he knows that he's not. And so he... Uh, they have in common is they're both good boys. Why does Tom feel threatened by them? Tom feels threatened by them because he knows that he's not a good boy. And even though he wishes he could kind of be like them, he kind of secretly despises them. And, um, he kind of makes, you know, he knows Aunt Polly wishes that he were more like them. So he feels threatened because it makes him feel like he's not good enough. Why does Tom lay outside of Becky's window, hoping she will come out? Um, she, <coughs> excuse me, why does Tom lay outside of her window? Okay, he's in love with her, and he thinks, well, if I hang around and I'm laying here, she's going to have to come give me some attention at some point. And, um, you know, it, he likes her this much. A lot of you put that. That was a good, you guys, I would say 90% of you put that she, he's interested in her, he likes her. All of those were good answers, um, but anything that uh, had to do with his interest in her. Why does Tom want a Bible? Okay, so he never wanted a Bible because he wanted a Bible. He wanted a Bible because he wanted to match Mary, or he wanted to do it for his own pride. So if you guys put anything like that, I counted it as credit. A logical fallacy is a fault in logic. Um, it's going to be something that weakens your argument. An example would be either or, ad hominem, um, you know, all of the ones we've been going over, appeal to authority, excuse me, all of the, um, the notes that you guys took, any of those would have been, um, an example. And then if you wanted to give me a further example, then that would have gotten you a little bit of extra credit. Three things you know about Tom. You guys did a pretty, I would say 95% of you did great on this. He's adventurous. He doesn't have parents. He has a half-brother. He lives with Aunt Polly. He's mischievous. You guys did a great job on this one, so I know that you know a lot about Tom. He is the one who really broke the sugar bowl. Okay, so Tom gets accused of this, and some of you did put Tom, but the one who really broke the sugar bowl is Sid. Okay, what do Abuela the Invents the Zero, your narrative, Mother to Son, A Celebration of Grandfathers, and The Adventures of Tom Sawyer all have in common? Okay, I would say only about half of you got this one. Um, a lot of you were like, well, I have a lesson, or there's a moral, or there's people involved. But what I wanted you guys to get to is that all of these have to do with um, appreciating friends and family, uh, they have to do with, uh, you know, discovering who you are, or there's a main character looking back trying to figure out why they did what they did, but mostly I was looking for you to say something about, um, appreciating friends and family, what can we learn from stories, something along those lines, but I took an array of answers, but that's what I was looking for. Um, I'm running out of time on this video. Um, if you guys want to write all of those down that I just went over, 
You are welcome to retake your quiz and get a much higher score now that you have all the answers. And stay tuned for the video with the summary.